Welcome to AutoLine Daily, and now let's get to the news. Mercedes-Benz is having a tough time with its EQC electric car. Last year, it planned to sell 25,000 of them, but was only able to build 7,000. Germany's manager magazine reports that the company has been forced to slash production in half this year due to a shortage of battery cells from its supplier, LG Chem. Mercedes planned to build 60,000 EQCs this year, but now it's only going to make 30,000. And this is bad timing since the company needs to hit stricter CO2 targets in Europe. A report from PA Consulting says that Daimler faces a fine of over a billion dollars if it doesn't reach its goals. And we'll have a related story coming up later in the show. Speaking of emissions, more automakers are facing punishment for cheating on diesel emissions. Yesterday, a judge in Canada approved a nearly $150 million fine for Volkswagen over its diesel cheating. The fine's not that much for a major global automaker, but it's the largest environmental penalty handed out in Canadian history. And it's not getting off that lightly. The company also previously agreed to spend nearly $2 billion to buy back or fix affected models from Canadian customers. And regulators in Europe are threatening to ban sales of the Jeep Grand Cherokee and Suzuki Vitara. Authorities claim that the diesel versions of both models violate emission standards. Jeep has developed a fix and that was approved. Suzuki still needs to come up with a solution or it's going to be forced to stop selling the Vitara in Europe. When Sandy Monroe was on AutoLine After Hours last week, he talked about the Cybertruck using a paper screen on the instrument panel. His description left a lot of people thinking he got it all wrong, so he sent us a clarification. He was talking about a technology called Paper Lion that was developed by a company in Michigan called Quantum Paper. The idea is to throw out all the plasma and LCD screens in a car and replace them with cardboard covered in a veneer of ultra-thin layers of electrically conductive ink. Not only does that slash weight, it reduces the amount of energy needed by 50 to 80 percent. And the picture that you're looking at here is the inventor, Michael Feldman, looking at a prototype paper television that's taped to a wall. Earlier this week, we reported on how Kyle Voigt, the CTO of Cruise, said that measuring disengagements of autonomous cars was not a good way to measure how good they are. Disengagements are when humans have to intervene and take control of an AV. Well, here's why Kyle Voigt said what he did. Cruise has found that drivers will disengage in an urgent situation just to be on the safe side. Cruise designed its system so drivers are aware of what the AV will do, but sometimes things happen too fast and so they just disengage the system. And sometimes drivers misjudge a situation and disengage. Cruise also believes in being polite to other drivers. So their drivers will disengage if another driver is aggressive or confused by what the AV is doing. Of course, there are times when they disengage because the AV makes an error. But even more, Voigt says that not all miles are created equal. Disengagement data does not take into account driving complexity or weather. Besides, he says, sometimes passengers don't like how a real human being is driving. And we've all experienced backseat drivers telling the driver how and where to drive. AI Ways is a Chinese automaker that will start selling its all-electric SUV in Europe this April. And this could pose a challenge for European automakers. Here's our AutoLine insight. European automakers need EV credits to offset the CO2 emissions of their ICE cars. By the end of next year, car makers must have their entire fleets average 95 grams of CO2 per kilometer or less, which works out to about 4.1 liters per 100 kilometers or 57 miles to the gallon. That's for the whole fleet. If they miss it, they're fined 95 euros per gram per car. So the fines could be massive and they need to sell more EVs to avoid them. 
But right now, the number of consumers ready and willing to buy electrics is rather limiting. And Chinese automakers exporting good-looking EVs at lower prices could siphon off enough buyers to make it very difficult for European automakers to sell enough EVs to avoid fines. And so the race is on. European OEMs need to rush to the market with their EVs before the Chinese can gain a foothold. Hey, be sure to join us for AutoLine After Hours this afternoon when our guest will be Jeff Schuster from LMC Automotive. We'll be getting his insight on consumer demand for EVs, especially for EVs that are not made by Tesla. And of course, we'll get into other topics as well. So join me, Gary Vasilash, and Mike Austin from Hemmings for some great insights as to what's going on in the automotive industry. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Automakers and suppliers are pouring billions of dollars into developing new technology. But according to a new global survey from Deloitte, consumers aren't all that willing to spend much money for these new gadgets. Deloitte questioned more than 35,000 people in 20 different countries. In the U.S., 60% of the respondents said they were unwilling to spend more than $500 for advanced automotive technology. In Germany, a large majority of consumers said they wouldn't pay more than 400 euros for advanced technology. Once these technologies become more commonplace, maybe consumer attitudes will change, but these results have got to be a little unnerving for the automotive industry. Airless tires are a pretty nifty idea, but we've always heard that they would not be durable enough to withstand the weight for passenger cars. But now Bridgestone has developed an airless tire that's able to withstand up to 5,000 pounds, and it's first going to offer them to commercial truck fleet operators. The center of the wheel is a thermoplastic web wrapped with a rubber tread around the outside. Bridgestone says that fleets encounter an air-related issue on their vehicles every 8,000 miles. And Bridgestone's also going to provide a fleet of airless tire bicycles at the 2020 Summer Olympics in Tokyo. Anyone that's had to tow a trailer knows it can be a harrowing experience. But General Motors is taking some of the worry out of trailering. It developed a new concept for trailer braking called eBoost. The system uses upgraded brake rotors, calipers, and tires, and allows the truck to control trailer braking through the existing 7-pin trailer wire connector. GM claims a truck with the system can stop in the same distance that it does without a trailer, and it improves stopping distance by up to 20%, or roughly 40 feet, compared to a truck towing a trailer with traditional electric trailer brakes. E-Boost doesn't need any extra connections, and it helps mitigate trailer sway by using stability control. Anyway, that's it for today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.